Back in 2021, I bought a brand new BMW M2 competition. What was supposed to be an amazing experience very quickly turned into the single worst automotive experience of my life. I've been wondering about whether to post this for a while now because all of this took place almost two years ago, but I think that you deserve to know, especially if you've ever considered buying a BMW yourself, you'll probably want to watch this through. I hope you get some value out of my story. Hey, welcome back to the channel. I wish it could be under better auspices, but sometimes we don't get to choose the cards that are dealt to us. So what I might do here is rewind uh, several months now, basically the day after I drove out of the dealership with the BMW M2, the brand new one, drove it across state to get detailed by a gentleman that did an absolutely wonderful job on it. And I want to make sure that you guys see that because that was quite a, quite a fun day. Otherwise, follow along and I'll try and narrate the process over the last six months as well as I can. So, the last time we left it guys, I had just picked up the M2 from the dealership and taken it cross state here to Dandenong South, Pro Class Detailing. So, over the last week, Sam has given it a full correction, uh, he's given it a full ceramic coat, 5 year warranty, he's done the wheel arches, the calipers, the, I think, glazing on the glass as well and I can't wait to see and just so coincidentally, I happen to be in front of the car right now. All right, Sam, so you've done a fantastic job here, man. Where can people find out more about your business? Where can they find you online? So we've got Facebook at the moment and Instagram, and currently working on a website. So that'll be up soon, hopefully. Awesome. <laughs> well, all the links <laughs> I can you, find, guys. I'll put in the description down below. So thanks again, Sam. Thank I can't you. wait to drive this thing no home problem. and ruin his fine paintwork. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> now, this is what takes us to the modern day, and this surreal compounding of issues I keep experiencing here in my last weeks in Australia that just seemingly will not let me go. So, the other week, I, I, I look outside out of my window and I notice condensation, kind of like you can see in the rear of this car right now currently, I notice condensation on the inside of the BMW and I didn't understand why this would be because I hadn't driven it in weeks if not months and I'm like, well, what does that mean? What does that... So that day I didn't have a chance to drive it, but the next day I was scheduled to go to my friends. The lockdown had just ended and I'm like, cool, I'm going to drive the M2 for the first time. We're going to give it a nice wash, you know, that I'm going to try, you know, I'm going to basically get back to selling the car because I've got it listed as brand new. I've got inquiries coming through. I get in the car, I start the car, everything's fine. Pump up the tires, tires are up to spec, everything's all good. I reverse the car out of the driveway and I hear this weird slushing sound in the back. Like a slush, like I left a water bottle there. So, so I'm like, okay, maybe I left like a large water bottle there. And I look in the back and I see glinting coming at me. I'm like, wow, I must have left like a two liter bottle there or something. And no, no, what it turns out that was, was the rear passenger footwell being about three inches deep with water. So it had rained for the last couple of nights prior to that. The car, for some reason had leaked rainwater into itself and it had all pulled in the rear left passenger footwell. Now this, sh I, I was in shock when I, I noticed this while driving down the road. I, I think I, I may have, I hope I stopped legally, but I feel like I just pulled the car over anywhere and just like got out and looked in astonishment in absolute disbelief at what had happened. Because again, 21 year old car here. I've got the seals falling off on this thing. I've never once had water leak into it. And here I have a brand new BMW M2 competition, 2021 model driven out of the dealership, cannot handle rain to a point where it pulls significant water in the water well in the back. And after the shock had passed, I just drove it to my friend's place. We scooped it out, sucked out the water um, with a like a water vacuum cleaner thing that my, my friend brought along dried out the rest with towels and I'll superimpose this stuff uh, as b-roll footage for you guys so you can see what this was about because this was one of the most astonishing days of my life especially insofar as my automotive life is concerned um so many many hours you know after all that we, we tried to drain out as much as we could it became very obvious that the damage had extended far beyond just the carpets and down into the floor of the car. And I knew this because it was pulling error codes the whole time I was driving to my friend's place. So I knew, I knew the electronics had been affected. And that was an absolute disaster. Um, so I managed to drive it home. Uh, fortunately, none of the, the, the error calls stopped me from being able to drive the car. 
managed to get home relatively safe and sound. Parked it in the driveway overnight. Woke up, of course, spoke to BMW, said, book me in. I need you guys to look at this. This is insane. Woke up, looked down at the car, condensation again, had filled up the rear footwell again overnight, right? So very easily repeatable issue. For some reason, when the car is parked on like a 30 degree angle, so a very steep driveway, it seems to pull water somewhere and let that water into the car and it's somehow channeled into the rear left footwell for whatever reason. So I take it to the dealership. And, um, you know, after them trying to suggest that I get an insurance assessor involved, I've made it pretty clear that I wouldn't do that because that's essentially like me admitting fault, like I'd expose the car to some kind of extraordinary circumstances, which I quite clearly didn't, you know, being parked for four months at a time if a car can't undergo that safely, I think it doesn't really meet many automotive specs, I'm sure you would agree. Um, <laughs> though if that's BMW's manufacturer spec, I, I do worry about the rest of their vehicles. So, took us to the dealership, um, got put in touch with um, one of the folks from the service center. He said that they would take it in and then basically run a, a battery of tests on it, see what had happened, and et cetera, et cetera. So, during this entire time, I'm getting offers on the car on our trading platform here in Australia, and I'm very frustrated because I'm having people offer me, in some cases, more than I purchased the car for. So, I, I was fully ready to sell this thing. It was already listed before this issue came up. And I'm like, guys, you know, do you have anything for me? Do you have anything for me? And every call is essentially them saying, yeah, we, we've, you know, been at it with a high pressure hose for so and so long. We can't isolate any, you know, leak. We can't isolate any issues. Um, we can't isolate any manufacturer defects. And I'm like, well, how's that the case? Like, how can a brand new car leak rainwater repeatedly overnight? I can, like, repeat this quite easily at my property. How can you not isolate a manufacturer fault with that? What kind of a spec are you working to? What does this mean? And... Every conversation I have takes us back to the, yeah, you probably want to get an insurance assessor involved, like trying to essentially pass the buck or pawn off the blame. Now, I don't know, may maybe the testing procedures aren't as stringent as they should be. Maybe they may legitimately cannot turn up this issue, but I can tell you that every day that there's rainfall just like this overnight, that car will pull up. So had it not been in the service center tonight, I would have taken it back, would have parked it right up there where it's been this entire time, would have set a time-lapse video on it, would have shown it filling up overnight, essentially. So the unfortunate thing is that the extent of the issues is so bad, the extent of this fault in the car is so bad that they thought that I'd actually submerged the car, that I drove it through some massive puddle or went bush bashing or off-roading with it. Future Omen here. I just realized, looking back through that dialogue and editing, that I didn't actually make mention of what looks to be the mud in the door aperture. Now, that's a fascinating one, and I left it there in my shots on purpose because I wanted it seen. That actually got created and trickled in as part of said leaks in the car. So believe it or not, whatever kind of guttering or whatever kind of sealing failed, it actually led to a runoff ending up there, combining dirt with water until eventually it seemed to have clogged up the door aperture itself, or rather what you would call, I guess, the, the door edge. Now, the crazy thing about this is, of course, the people who tested it looked at that and assumed that I either took the car bush bashing, drove it through floodwaters somehow while I was locked down at home for half the year, or whatever myriad of other things they thought led the water to actually seep in from the bottom of the car, which of course is patently absurd. Not least of which because my driveway is on a substantial angle, but there's no water line elsewhere in the car. All right, back to the present, past. So you gotta understand, this is a car that I drove you could not imagine somebody that has babied a car more than I've babied this M2 and that has not driven it as much as I have not driven this one. Because I isolated very early on that I would need to leave Australia and that I would need to sell this car. So my primary objective was to keep the car in as good condition as I possibly could. And this was the outcome. So... At the present moment, I can give you guys updates as this goes along. I'm sure some of you would be interested to hear what's going on. At the present moment, they're still pushing that I get the external insurance assessor involved, which I'm obviously vehemently against. I, I don't see this as any fault of my own. This is very clearly a manufacturer defect or it might be a design defect. It's some kind of defect. Let me tell you, when you get pooling of water that's that deep in the rear of your car after just basic simple rain, the last thing you want to hear is that it was somehow your fault. So, with that said, um, I'm going through the appropriate channels. I'm seeing what the consumer rights situation is here in Australia. Uh, the unfortunate effect of this is that it's one of the many issues that's prolonging my stay here in Victoria. It's to say that I'm immensely frustrated right now would be to undersell the situation greatly. 
but sometimes you know these are the the hands that life deals and you've just got to got to play them as best as you can so seems like what would otherwise be a kind of minor issue spiraling into what's basically becoming a catastrophic one i can no longer sell the car under the same conditions um i i listed it as i mean i certainly don't even know we don't even know the extent of the electronic damage they're they're still scoping out the extent of that damage how many sensors how many features might have failed what that repair might entail and obviously they're trying to pawn off the cost of that repair onto my insurance company which is of course going to be reflected on myself rather than treating it as a manufacturer's warranty type situation which is immensely frustrating to say the least especially for a car that i got so relatively little out of in the time that i had lengthy verbose rant aside that is my first and presumably last experience with bmw um i would kind of as a business owner myself as a multiple business owner i would be ashamed if this was the experience that one of my customers was having with one of my products it's unacceptable to say the very least the quality control is unacceptable i have um a friend of my own bought a sister car so there were three of these left in australia he bought one of the other two has had many issues with his own none quite as catastrophic as mine but he's had a hose come off the intercooler basically broke down the car on a highway with the kids in the back uh, all kinds of fun stuff like that lots of uh, fitting issues so there's there's definitely some balls being dropped over at bmw and i think at this point i would just like to see them take some actual accountability for it and look after their customers so let me know if you guys want to be kept up to date with i suppose this story as it unfolds uh, i've yet to see the extent of damage it's going to do to my life i've already it's already cost me uh, a gr well, i mean well into the six figures so that's that's fun but um, yeah, as you can tell, I'm probably not too thrilled. I'd love to know what you guys think. If you've had similar experiences with your BMWs, if you have any insight for me, anything that can help whatsoever, I'd love to hear from you. But yeah, until next time, I hope to be able to report back with some better news.